In an earlier lecture, we had learnt about how we can subset vectors. We learnt how to extract individual elements by passing an integer within square brackets or by extracting a collection of elements by passing a vector of the positions we are interested in. So we learned about that. But another very important way of subsetting vectors and therefore data frames is by using booleans. We had already learned about booleans in an earlier lesson. So after completing this lesson, you'll be able to do all of these things. You'll be able to create boolean vectors using the C function. You already know how to do this. And you'll be able to explain how subsetting with boolean vectors actually works. And then you'll subset vectors to extract only the elements that satisfy certain conditions. So for example, get me all the elements of a vector which are below average or above average, less than 100, greater than 100, or less than 100 and divisible by 2, whatever conditions we would like. So we'll do that. And then we'll also learn how to write complex Boolean conditions involving the use of logical operators and an OR. So these are the things that we'll be learning in this particular lesson. So first of all, let's understand the basis for all of this, which is Boolean vectors. A Boolean vector, of course, is a vector that contains Boolean elements. And you already know that a Boolean element is either a true or a false. And remember, these have to be spelled with uppercase. So the two Boolean constants in R are true and false spelled with uppercase. OK, so here I'm creating a variable called B and assigning to it the value on the right hand side, which is basically a vector consisting of Boolean values, right? You already understand that we use the C function to create a vector. And within parentheses, we supply the arguments we want. And in this case, the arguments are the Boolean constants. Okay, true, false, etc. It's just like nothing different than creating other vectors that we have done already, right? So we've got this Boolean vector. And we can use a Boolean vector for subsetting. Earlier, we saw how to use an integer vector for subsetting, but we can also use Boolean vectors. So once again, we've got our good old uh, Boolean vector B. And here we've got a regular vector of integers, 3, 5, 8, 2. Of course, this is a vector with four elements. Okay. So now the interesting thing is I've got a Boolean vector, and I'm going to use this Boolean vector to subset this vector dat. So if I say dat and within bracket I say b, which is this Boolean vector, and notice what I got back. I got back 3 and 2, which is the first element and the last element. And incidentally, if you look at the Boolean vector, true is in the first and the last positions. Okay. So the way this works is that whenever you pass a Boolean vector to subset another vector, then you're going to get back only those elements of the vector which correspond to the true values in the Boolean vector, right? So the first and fourth elements are true. Therefore, you got back the first and fourth elements. Okay, so if this vector, for example, was all false, then you would have got back nothing. If they were all true, you would have got back everything. Okay, so here first and last were true. So you got back uh, the first and the last elements. Okay, and of course, the result here is a vector. Right, because you've got multiple items, the result is a vector. And of course, again, uh, just wanted to point out here that, of course, a vector is supposed to consist of all elements of the same type. And here, the same type for all the elements is Boolean. Okay, so of course, I can also assign the result to a variable. So instead of just saying that B and seeing the result printed on the console, I can say V is assigned the value that B. Okay, so in this case, since I assigned something, I do not see any result on the console. And then to see the result, the value of v, I type in the command v, and I see the result on the console 3, 2, which is exactly, of course, the same thing. Let's take a look at Boolean expressions. So here we've got an expression like x less than 5. Okay, So x might be just a number like 10. So in this case, x less than 5 would say 10 less than 5. And of course, this is either true or false. Okay, and similarly, I'm saying y greater than three. Once again, this is a this is going to be true or false, depending on the value of y. Okay, so these two are examples of Boolean expressions. Boolean expressions have a result which is either true or false. There is no other possibility. Okay, and the third Boolean expression we have here is x double equals y. Okay, that is I, we are basically checking here are x and y equal. That's what we are checking, right? And why use the double equals? Why not use just the single equals? 
Now recall from earlier that the single equals is the assignment operator. So if I just wrote x single equals y, then that would be assigning the value of y to the variable x. That's not what we are trying to do here. What we are trying to do here is to compare x and y to find out whether they are equal or unequal. Okay, so in this case, if the, you know, for example, if x is 5 and y is 4, uh, the result is going to be false. If both are 5, the result is going to be true. Okay, so be very careful about the difference between the assignment operator equals and the comparison operator, the double equals. So let's consider the following vector. It consists of four integers, 3, 5, 1, and 7. And let's look at the result of evaluating this expression, dat less than or equal to 5. Okay, this is less than or equal to, not the assignment operator, because the assignment operator is less than dash. This is less than or equal to. Okay, which means given two values, x and y, if you write the expression x less than or equal to y, then you're just seeing, is x less than or equal to 5? Is that true or false? And therefore, that's a Boolean expression. In this case, this is a Boolean expression because you're comparing something less than or equal to something else. It's a Boolean expression, except that on the left-hand side is a vector. Okay, or the right-hand side currently is not a vector, but it could be a vector as well. In this case, it's just a scalar, the number 5. Okay, so the result is going to be a Boolean vector corresponding to whether each element is less than or equal to 5 or not. Okay, so the result obviously is going to be true, 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 false. 3 is less than or equal to 5, true. 5 is less than or equal to 5, true. 1 is less than or equal to 5, true. 7 is greater than 5. It's not less than or equal to 5, therefore false. Okay, so the result of this is a Boolean vector. Okay, and of course, we know that this is how it works because of vectorized operations. Okay, so now let's consider uh, this, that of that less than or equal to 5. Okay, earlier in the previous slide, we looked at only the result of that less than or equal to 5. Now we are saying that's a Boolean vector, right? That was a Boolean vector, true, 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 false. Okay, and that was a Boolean vector, true, 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 false. So what we are going to get back, obviously, is all the elements corresponding to true. And therefore, we got the first three elements, 3, 5, 1. Okay. So remember, once again, what happened here is that that less than or equal to 5, that's a Boolean vector, true, 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 false. Okay. And when you use a Boolean vector to subset a vector, what you're going to get back is all the elements corresponding to the true positions. Okay. So here, the true positions are uh, true, 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 false is the result of this one. So the true positions are the first, second, and third position. The last position was false. So you got back the elements in the first three positions, 3, 5, 1. Okay, so this is how uh, we would practically use Boolean vectors to subset other vectors. Okay, so this is a way of saying from the vector dat, get me all the elements which are less than or equal to 5, which is why we are saying dat of dat less than or equal to 5. That is because dat less than or equal to 5 evaluates to a Boolean vector. And we will get back all the results for which this evaluates to true. In other words, in which this condition is satisfied. Okay, so here's one more thing. So we've got dat of, uh, dat is C3517, dat of dat less than or equal to 5. I'm just explaining the previous uh, expression, right? So we already know that this expression, that of that less than or equal to 5, evaluates to true, 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 false. It's a Boolean vector. Okay. And therefore, the result is 3, 5, 1, because you're getting back whatever corresponds to true, which is 3, 5, 1, the first three positions. Let's take one more example. So we've got a vector here. This time, the vector has some negative and positive elements. Let's say that our task was to get only the negative elements in the vector. In other words, we want minus 5 and minus 4. We don't want the others, right? So that means we want to say, get me all the elements of that that satisfy the condition that the elements are less than 0, right? So we can do it like this. We can say that of that less than 0, right? That's the condition. That less than 0 is our condition. And of course, that gets back the results that we are expecting, right? So this is the actual sense in which you will be using Boolean vectors to subset other vectors. We actually won't be creating a Boolean vector using Boolean constants, true and false. That's not what we'll do. 
I showed that just as a way of explaining to you how this thing works. In reality, this is how we'll be doing and it's pretty intuitive, right? We're saying get me all the elements of that which are less than zero, that of that less than zero. Okay, so that's how it works. And again, I remind you, most of the time we'll be working with data frames and not individual vectors, right? And of course, we understand that we have to learn vectors very well because every column of a data frame is actually a vector. And many times we are operating on individual columns of the data frame. So unless you have a very good grasp of how vectors work, uh, you're not going to be very comfortable with R. That's why we are talking about all of these things. Okay, so here that less than zero basically value, it's going to be true only for the second position and the fifth position. So true here, true here, everything else is false. So you're going to get back only the negative elements. Let's take another example. Get all the elements that are below average. Okay, in other words, we are saying uh, there is an average of all these vectors. Get me only those elements which are below average. So once again, it's very simple. We just have so that of that less than mean of that. Very easy, right? Because the condition is the value is less than the mean. So on the right hand side, we put mean of that, which is one number. On the left hand side, of course, is a vector that less than mean of that. So that is going to give you a Boolean vector with true only for those elements which are less than average. Okay, and it so happens that only the two negative elements are less than average, so you get back only the negative elements. If there had been a positive number which was also less than average, we'd have got that back. One more example. So I've got here a long vector of integers. So here I'm giving a condition that says get all the elements that are above the median and below the mean. Right, so in order for an element to be selected, it has to satisfy two conditions, not just one condition. It has to be more than the mean, uh, more than the median, and it has to be less than the mean. Okay, both of those conditions have to be satisfied. I'm using these examples just to show you how you can construct complex conditions. Okay, so the complex condition here, I'm, I'm using spaces here just to make sure that everything is clear. So I'm saying that, and within brackets, I've got the first condition here, that less than mean of that from the previous slide and that greater than median of that above the median okay and I've connected both of these expressions with the logical operator and okay the ampersand is the logical operator it's called a logical operator because it is applied to boolean operands right so you'll say this condition is true and that condition is true right and when you say this condition is true or false that's a boolean value the other condition is bool true or false is another boolean value you combine Boolean values by using logical operators and ampersand is the logical AND operator, right? So this whole condition of that less than mean of that and that greater than mean of that, that whole condition is true only if each of them individually is true, right? Because you're saying this is true and this is true. That's what is going on here, right? And also we uh, placed this expression in parentheses, this expression separately in parentheses for clarity, you, you didn't have to do it actually because the operator precedence is such that less than and greater than and so on have a slightly higher precedence than the operand, so things would have worked. But this expression is just a lot, lot clearer to read when you put it in parentheses. That's why I chose to put it in parentheses, okay? So you construct complex conditions by putting the simple conditions and connecting them with Boolean operators and, and there's another Boolean operator called R. That's what we'll be looking at here. So here's we are saying get all the elements that are above the median or below the mean, right? In the earlier case, the we had used the and to say both conditions should be true. Here we are saying I'm fine if either one of the conditions is true, one or both conditions are true. Okay, so it's going to be quite similar except that we use here the uh, or operator, which is the vertical bar you find the vertical bar on top of the key that contains backslash. So shift backslash would give you the vertical bar which is used as the logical OR operator, not just in R but in many programming languages. And that completes our discussion of how we use Boolean vectors to subset other vectors.